Welcome to the CX Green Room. I'm Ginger Conlin, Thought Leadership Director at Genesis. And we are here today with several special guests and a special co-host, who I'll pass the mic to momentarily, to talk about the theme, uh, Accelerating Experience Transformation, and specifically how exceptional customer experiences start with a unified workforce. Greg, take it away. Hi everybody, my name is Greg Thomas. I am the Senior Director of Thought Leadership here at Genesis and I'm super excited to be here on The Green Room. Um, and so we have a couple guests here to talk about uh, how we think about the integration of front office and back office. So consumers are always thinking of the, customer, the companies that they contend with as a unified entity, not a group of siloed functions, and they expect those seamless end-to-end -end journeys, no matter how many departments are involved. So Ian Henderson, the Senior Director and Outbound PM of CX Ecosystem at ServiceNow. Welcome, Ian. Thank and you. Jack Nichols, the VP of Product Management here at Genesis, are going to discuss how you unify your front and back office workforce to ensure a cohesive customer experience, increase efficiencies, and reduce operational and service costs. Um, and we'll also talk about how convergence on the technology side can help organizations integrate their front and back office teams. Um, so Ian, welcome to the green room. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about ServiceNow. Hey guys, uh, my name is Ian Henderson, as you, as you said. So I'm on the Outbound PM team here. My, my remit is ecosystem, which is pretty broad. Spent a lot of time working with uh, Jack and team on the CCAS side of things. The front office is a, is a huge push for us at the moment, uh, really kind of expanding our, our remit beyond the, the middle and back office today. Um, as far as ServiceNow, hopefully most folks know who we are, but if you don't, uh, we're the company that makes work better for everybody. Uh, you could probably summarize that up as we're a workflow company. You might know us best from our ITSM product, but not really a secret at this point, but we, we have about a billion dollars in revenue from our CSM products, so really customer service focused as well. So, you know, primary focus there is essentially customer service help desk type um, type use cases. Glad you're here. And, and Jack, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Genesis? Yeah, thanks for having me, and it's uh, been a great partnership with Ian and the team here. But uh, as you said, Jack Nichols, Vice President of Product. I've been with Genesis Cloud since the early, early days, so uh, since it was formerly known as Pure Cloud. So today I oversee multiple different areas of the product, but focusing on our CRM partnerships, our embeddable desktops, our work automation suite, and a plethora of other things. But yeah, I think pertinent today has been about the partnership with ServiceNow and kind of what we're doing and what we're trying to bring to market together, so. Yeah, very, very exciting. And as, as Greg mentioned, you know, consumers don't think about companies as these different entities across channels, right? They're, I'm doing business with, with you, company XYZ, and so it's really powerful to bring the front and back office together. So tell us a little bit more about why that's so powerful and what benefits organizations can expect. I mean, I think the, the primary one really is visibility. I mean, and that goes in a couple of different directions. You know, one from a customer standpoint, whatever SLA you expect or, or set with your customer, they always still like to know that things are moving and progressing. And I think, you know, historically, a lot of a lot of customers have, you know, they've set their SLAs as, hey, we'll respond to a whatever an email within two days, um, and that's that's kind of where they leave it. There's no visibility from the customer standpoint into that things are actually moving, things are progressing, that you know that you actually care about them and are doing something on their behalf. So, you know, in, in terms of hard benefits, having that greater visibility as work moves through the organization reduces inbound call volume, it reduces callbacks, it reduces frustration. It's a whole ton of good customer benefits as well. The, the more internal facing benefit from the same, same visibility is you then have a consistent view of your processes from the point of engagement all the way through to the point of fulfillment. So that gives you the opportunity to really optimize your processes and understand what's actually happening. You understand that, you know, when, uh, you know, this particular task in a workflow reaches this team, it then sits there for two weeks, and that's why you're missing your SLAs. Rather than, well, I know that customer makes a request, and sometime later they get a response, you miss that um, that behavior within within the organization. So I think those are the key, the real key benefits. And really, you know, to some extent, they're, they're kind of the, the, the grounding or the foundation for then, well, how do you apply automation? Or how do you improve your customer experience? Or how do you, you know, push to self-service, or how do you prefer to, to you know, change your customer journey a little bit to, to have a more of an assisted service at the key points in that journey as well? Yeah, and I think I'll, I'll build off that. And I like what you said up front, Ginger, is, and I see this as a consumer myself, is I work with a brand, I don't work with the department yeah. of a brand. And I think that's a very critical thing. And 
you know, I've talked to a lot of customers and I think bringing both together has been really interesting because, you know, I was talking to a customer recently and here's a great example is, you know, when they are a consumer brands and if something gets delivered, it has a problem, you have to RMA it. You know, if you think about that process and how it works, a lot of times the contact center, what are they doing? They're looking at it and going, what was my average handle time? What was my speed of answer? Things like that. Consumer doesn't really care about that. I care about, did it actually make it to me? Did it get lost in transit again? Did I have other problems? That is actually a bigger thing for the brand and from a consumer perspective, you know, while we're measuring our agents from, you know, did they answer it quickly, empathetically, all those things, which is important. They're not looking at the customer is looking at, did I get my RMA? Did I get it in time for maybe I had an event going on? And I think that's such a critical thing in the new world that folks have to look at it and the way we have to measure things. Uh, we were talking about this this morning actually is that you know, with AI and everything, it's gonna change how organizations operate and those upfronts, one and done interactions gonna change. So now it's the more complex pieces. It's the things that touch multiple parts of the organization. And if those are completely fragmented and bespoke as a lot of times they are today, it's going to continuously erode at that customer experience when you're working with that brand. And I think we've all can probably think of examples in our heads of when that's hit us in our personal lives too. So I think, yeah, this is a really interesting way to kind of think about where the future is going too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think to continue that thread about the customer experience, you know, we do a lot of research here at Genesis and we know the customers get super frustrated by poor journey design. They hit these dead ends, they have to, you know, they're trying to move from one channel to another and it's not working or they have to repeat themselves. Um, what do you see from from sort of your perspective? What what are those that customer side of it, what are the adverse effects that, that happens there if they're not getting a good journey? Many varied. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's, there's three key things that we're looking to do with the partnership that really sort of speaks to what the, the problems are trying to solve. You know, the, the first is to unify the agent experience. The second is to centralize work routing, both you know, engagement channels as well as you know, middle and back office work. And the third is then to optimize workforce engagement as well. So, you know, really from the, from the engagement standpoint on that unified desktop, being able to take a summary of a chat and be able to play back to a customer, you know, once it escalated from a, from a you know, virtual uh, conversation to a real conversation, without them having to repeat themselves, just confirming key points. Hugely beneficial in terms of CSAP because you've already had this conversation once. I think, you know, that to your point, some of those key frustrations are, I, you know, I don't work with the department, I work with the brand, I don't want to have to keep repeating myself again and again and again. Like, and it's especially true in our world where quite often the, the workflows that we are deploying for our customers are more complex. If you get to tier one, it's too complex for them. They've got to pass you off and, and transfer the call to tier two. You've got to repeat yourself again. So, you know, from our perspective, simple things like interaction summaries are hugely beneficial to on the, the CSAT side of things. They have hard benefits in average handle time as well. Because again, that customer doesn't need to repeat themselves. The agent doesn't need to stand there or sit there and listen to them. Um, so those, I think, are, are some of the, the key things as well. And then I think, you know, from the customer's standpoint, ultimately being able to get service quickly as well. I mean, and this speaks, I think, to that, the third point about you know, both the, the routing and workforce engagement. You know, everybody's dealing with constrained resources. Being able to deploy those resources where they're needed at the right point in time, being able to deploy them flexibly so that you know, when call queues are where, not where you want them to be or chat queues are not where you want them to be, uh, being able to, again, you know, have multi-skilled agents that you can, you can swing from one channel to another with a familiar interface, with the same set of tools, with the same set of business processes throughout that experience, again, gives you as, a, as an organization more flexibility to serve your customers while also maintaining or at least constraining your costs. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting that you brought up the agent desktop. I literally was late for this because I was just in a meeting with a customer where that's what they want, is yeah. they want a unified agent desktop because they're seeing agents are dealing with more and more complex things. Yeah. So you know, if you think about even in the example earlier, I might need to be able to see the ERP, I might need to be able to see the shipping register on things. And so their whole point was we want a unified desktop because when it comes to an agent, they're going to need tools from all sorts of places. Um, yeah, you know, and I really liked, you know, I was at the knowledge conference last week with you and you know, hearing Bill talking about bringing all that data up from all these bespoke systems and, you know, Genesis adding into that and being able to bring that kind of unified desktop. So now yeah. when that age, when AI does fail us on occasion, uh, you know, it gets that agent, the agent has all the tools, all the information yeah. right there in front of them. They're not going, please hold. I mean, how many times have we heard that, you know, on calls ourselves, hold on, I've yeah. got to go log into this system, give me five minutes and I'll come back. You know, that doesn't, can I place you yeah. on a brief hold? Yes, yes. <laughs> can I, you know, uh, 
uh, that doesn't exist in the future world. That's not acceptable. I mean, I have young kids, and that's not acceptable to them to be put on a brief hold. That means click, I'm hung up at that point. So, yeah. so I think that unifying these pieces is, is such a critical of making the agent. And I think there's a part of this for me, and I'm, I'm really excited about the partnership here, is it's starting to say, how do we, as brands, meet customers where they are and meet the right agents where they yeah. are? If you think about some of the stuff Tony was talking about on the main stage, and you know, you think about you know universal agent, universal queue. Agents might be sitting on different systems and all over the organization. But if I can figure out, you know, if I touch you on the outside here on this website, I can get you to the right agent regardless. Because I mean, I've had this in my own life where I've gone and chatted with a someone, and they're like, "Oh, you're in the wrong place. Here's a link. Go to this website. Use this yeah. chat." I mean, we've all probably experienced that. And you know, the idea of being able to orchestrate that all the way through, be able to have that universal agent meet the agent where they are, I think is such a yeah. critical and powerful thing. And it's really been fantastic to see the customer responses since last week. You know, I think they're coming out of the woodwork and you know, yeah. really excited about some of those pieces. I mean, I think there's, there's two phenomenal points in there, just about the way that we see that desktop. You know, for us, it's not just that single pane of glass and that customer 360. And let's be honest, we've all in the industry been talking about that for a long time. At this point. <laughs> you know, for, for us, you know, our focus and the, you know, it's in everything we do. It's about work. And it's about getting work done. You know, our, our heritage in the ITSM world, we talk about fulfillers and requesters. And really, you know, when a customer contacts us, they've got a request, they want to do something. So from our perspective, it's about transactionally enabling that conversation. So you guys bring the conversation, you guys bring the routing. So, you know, not only are we tracking the work, so when a customer does call or chat or email in, that can potentially go to the person who's actually actively working on that workflow right now. We have that insight. And when it does land with them, they also have the transactional tools to, to do that RMA, to, to process that and get it done and get it you know, all the way through to fulfillment. And that really, for us, is the exciting part about the partnership is that you guys have this huge breadth of information, this you know, wealth of knowledge and wealth of capability before it gets to an agent, and then once it's with an agent, we have everything that goes on within the organization's walls as well. And I think that's really a phenomenal opportunity for the two of us to go. And you have the outcomes that we can then yeah. help to make the routing even smarter. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay, so you guys sold me. Like, this is good. <laughs> this is good. So what's, what's, what's holding us back? What are the process and technology barriers that are keeping this unification of the front and the back and, and this journey that you both were talking about from happening? I mean, there's a number of things, and I think with any technology partnership, you know, one of the great things that we have here is, is great partnership with Jack and team. I mean, you know, the product teams are meeting on a, you know, bi-weekly, uh, no, twi what's twice weekly, not bi-weekly, semi-weekly? Yeah, semi-weekly. Monthly but, workshops in person, it's been yeah. great. Uh, you know, nobody's perfect, and ultimately, I think we've all got enough battle scars in the industry to understand what are those, you know, implementation blockers that, that you know, ultimately, customers are sold on a vision, but it's just too hard to get there. So a lot of what we're doing is figuring out how do we simplify our APIs to, you know, ship everything turnkey, ship things out of the box, do a lot of the just, frankly, nitty-gritty of, like, data schema alignment and just make sure that customers don't need to, to worry about that. Um, you know, likewise, understanding how we can both um, come together and have a coherent agent experience or user experience using the best of both worlds. You know, in some cases, we're going to ship new capabilities. In other cases, we're going to, you know, give Jack and team, you know, just the sort of canvas to, to, to do their thing as well. And, you know, ultimately, we, we already ship, I think, something like over 70 integrations with CSM. So for us, a lot of the hard-won uh, complexity of integrating with enterprise systems we've done already and the, really the, the next challenge is making sure that the you know things like synchronizing skills things like identity management all these things that you know just an implementation consultant hits a roadblock we've thought about it we've done it and we've, we get it to them in a, in a turnkey fashion yeah and it's funny because that question came up this morning to us you know when we were meeting with analysts and they we were talking about that being one of the biggest challenges everyone wants to get there but then they have organizational impedance, I'll call it, you know, yeah. and, and challenges. And I think there, we, you know, we talked about it. And one of the things is, I think we have a unique opportunity to kind of rise up above that, you know, because we all know, and this came up, was to run a big project to go clean your entire organizational data structure. It's large, it's timely, it's expensive, and by the time you get done, it's probably out of date. And you're still generating data while well, that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> it, and it's, it never ends. And so, you know, I think we have the opportunity to kind of sit above that. And as you know, Ian mentioned, we were talking about this this morning, identity resolution, starting to be able to say, hey, we can pull data and we can pull events from different places and we can start to maybe sit above some of the noise and we can start to filter out the noise. And then with the unified data, you know, rather than customers have to figure out how to make that work, we can start saying, okay, you know, ServiceNow, here's the good data we know and vice versa. So now we're kind of enriching both sides 
from a data perspective because I mean, I think you know, hopefully everyone understands data is such a core part of the future of AI and that data cleanliness is going to be such a critical on who succeeds and who doesn't. And so I think there's an opportunity here for us to sit above all the other systems without having to go change all of them yeah. and be able to start to clean that data, exchange the data in a very trusted way to then leverage and activate that data. So I think there's a, an opportunity here for us to use that to kind of help organizations get past that impedance they've been, fi they've been fighting because I mean, I, I hear it all the time from organizations. I was just talking to one customer and they said, we have 11 records and we don't know which one is the right one for the customer. And so if we can come together and start to say, oh, well based on our historical data, our interaction data, you know, the transactional data we have on, on the, uh, the uh, ServiceNow side, we can now start saying this is actually the right data for the customer. And then eventually we can start to write that down in the other system so we can start to actually scrub it without having to go pay a big you know, SI to come in and spend a multi, you know, multi years, multi million dollars to do that. So. so let's go back to the unified desktop for a minute because I just I just need to share some data because that's what I do, right? <laughs> so our state of CX, um, interestingly, employee experience has risen to the top of their CX strategic priorities and what is the number one thing that they want to do? They want to, to improve the employee experience then in doing so improve, improve the customer experience by either implementing new technology or combining the technology they have for that agent desktop. And then our um, CX customer experience and the future of work showed similarly the number one thing that CX leaders want to do to improve the employee experience is by providing them with a unified desktop. And then back at State of CX, one of the technologies that they're looking to use to support their strategic initiatives is a, a platform, a cloud platform that brings together all of these systems and helps you know, connect the dots and the data, right? So um, speaking of connecting the dots and the data, Technology convergence is crucial to all the things that you're talking yeah. about, right? Bringing together CCAS, CRM integration, back office integration. So what is the state of technology convergence in customer experience? You know, I, I think we've talked a fairly good game for a while on some of the basics. You know, certainly from a you know, CCAS and CRM standpoint, CTI, core control integration's been, you know, been around a, a long time at this point. You know, I think we're, we're starting to push the envelopes now of understanding where, you know, to, to Jack's point about sharing data and AI, um, where those things will, will thread together. I mean, a great example about, you know, from, from our perspective, a lot of what we do from a, with customers is, is effectively, it runs over a period of time. So, you know, it's not just who's the customer right now, who's the cash right now. A case is going to have time, it's going to have data that changes over time. Um, so, you know, ultimately, you know, a point during that conversation, we're going to have AI inputs from, from different places. So we're going to have, you know, real-time transcription and sentiment from a genesis at the point of engagement. We're going to have case summarization at the point of, um, you know, completing a case or transferring a case from agent to agent from our standpoint as well. So, you know, I think a lot of the underlying things from our standpoint we, we try and abstract a lot of the organizational complexity anyway, you know, to your point about you know, the ERP versus the, the customer-centric CRMs or the, you know, the product or account-centric uh, ERPs. We'll do a lot of that abstraction layer for our customers effectively, which then can you know, obviously be leveraged by you guys. And I think to me, the, the, the state of the interesting pieces are, well, how do we chain together some of these more uh, more forward-looking capabilities, like you know, like transcription, like you know, AI. You know, love the Tony's keynote this morning. Just the the focus, and, you know, Olivier talking about um, you know AI just across the whole experience for you guys. And I think how that's going to dovetail with what we're doing is, is is really exciting as well. So the technology convergence to me it really comes together across that 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 journey, really. Yeah, I'd agree with everything you said, and I think that you know when you think about agent experience, because you know, go back to the core of the question is, you know, agents are going to be challenged. They still are challenged. I mean, yeah. you know, they're an underrated group of champions for a brand, and, and can really make or break the experience for customers with a brand. And I think sometimes that gets overlooked, and they get all the hardest conversations. You know, they get the customer that's been frustrated because. They tried to use the bot up front and it didn't work and now they're getting it on the phone, which they didn't want to have to do. And so, you know, I think when we think about it, you know, it's about giving more tools, you know, bringing, making the agents like as easy as we can, giving them more training. You know, I think when you think about AI, you know, you heard Tony talk about it this morning and, you know, 
being able to have AI understand well, where's this agent in their journey? How do I train them? You know, we had a partnership on the Genesis side with Thrive, you might know, you know, Thrive Global, and you know, and that was about how do we give what they called Thrive resets to agents. So when I know that the agent's getting stressed, they just had a customer, I can automatically sense that I can send them a reset which helps them kind of decompress and you know take it down and de-escalate for lack of a better word. And I think that there's a lot of things that we can do, and I think, you know, again, when we get to that single desktop, it's not, oh, I have to switch from here to here to here to do those things. It's, oh, okay, you know what? It just saw, I have other work coming in. It's not even just a phone call. Now it's like, oh, I saw like cases. I had this, yeah. I had this. You know what? Let's set a Thrive Reset because this person needs a break. They need to take downtime. Or, you know, let's gamify this and let's make them more engaged. Let's give them more education because ultimately you think about, you know, an agent, they want to grow their career. They want to grow their skill sets. They want to do more. You know, they're working to do more and more things and so the more that they feel like they're being developed to do that and empowered to do that and not just you know getting the worst of the worst you know challenges every yeah. day i think that will make them more loyal to the brand and you know we zappos is always the great poster child for that you know and i think you're going to see more and more brands use these tools to help reinforce that environment yeah. reinforce that kind of you know the fact that they are part of the team they're a critical part of the team and that they care about them as part of the team yeah. For sure. I mean, I, I love that. I mean, I think just it's investing in people at yeah. the end of the day. You know, I think yeah. you know agents often have been at the you know tail end of where where customers have invested, and I think that's a it's a huge part of what we're doing. Because frankly, their job is getting harder. You know, the yeah. easy yeah. stuff increasingly is being helped been done on either self service or virtual agents, or you know, increasingly it's you know it's the more difficult jobs that are ultimately landing with a human being and they're landing at a point in a journey where the customer is already a little bit more frustrated if you know if that journey hasn't been as smooth as it could be so you know i think you know all of us have in mind that at the end of the day a contact center agent is there to help people that is what they're trying to do what they're trained to do and the most frustrating thing about their job is if they if they can't do that if there are things in their way when a customer says please help me with this and they're like okay sure but first let me go and do things across these four or five different systems okay now, now I can help you. It's, it, it, it's frustrating. So the more of that we can simplify, the more of that that we can use process-based UIs and workflow to guide them through what they need to do for the more complex things, to abstract that complexity as much as we can, you know, ultimately it's going to make them you know, closer to the customer and closer to helping them out. Yeah. So just quickly, we do have research that shows that two of the things that 16,000 agents worldwide love about their job is learning new skills and learning new technologies. So the more that you can support your agents with these technologies, the, the, the more they are likely to stay and be, and be happy. And, you know, so I want to jump back to what you were talking about with the journeys. And two of the big wins about connecting the front and back office are journey optimization and process optimization, uh -huh. right? And being able to make sure that there's not a downstream negative unintended consequence or impact when you're making an improvement one place or another. So can you talk a little bit about um, you know, what are some of the benefits of being able to optimize processes and journeys and what does it take to get there? Sure. I mean, I think, like as I said at the beginning, you know, I think visibility is, is job number one. So understanding all the way from, you know, whenever a customer's journey starts out on the web or wherever it may be, all the way through to, you know, fulfillment of a given a given thing, whether that's, you know, a new a new loan or a completed credit card dispute or whatever whatever business transaction you're trying to get through. So visibility is, is, is key, and I think that's where the combination of, of both the CX orchestration and process optimization on our side gives you that visibility. You know, it doesn't just stop when it lands on an agent's desktop. Likewise, it doesn't just start out of nowhere like, uh, in our, our world today. So, I mean, how do you get there? Ultimately, I think you need to have a coherent view of what you're trying to do. Um, and I think, from my, from my perspective, a coherent way to manage work. Because ultimately, to, to you know, some of the greatest benefits here is the flexibility in your workforce. Being able to respond to customer demands, being able to respond to, respond to you know, sometimes those less predictable peaks in contact volume, which then have a downstream impact on your operational teams, you know, middle and back office operation systems. So having that consolidated view, uh, having a single system that roots work, a single system that understands the capacity of your workforce, which is going to be Genesis, and we're going to pass all the service now work to the Genesis um, uh, Genesis routing engine. It's just it's an unprecedented level of visibility. I think the customers just haven't had before. 
Yeah, and I'd say uh, the journey is interesting. Like we were actually just had an offsite a few weeks ago. We were talking about the front end of the journey is only getting more and more complex for companies. Yeah. You know, I look at my own kids, they are buying stuff on like TikTok and things like that, and brands are selling on there. So I saw like they're doing like $2 million worth of sales or something now. And the different ways and the different places you touch brands isn't just the traditional mediums anymore, yeah. it's all across. And so there's all these touch points and we got to manage those, bring those into journey management, see, oh, well, you know, I might've touched your brand in five different places and then I might've finally made a purchase through the actual website, you know, and knowing what those are, getting those in there so that again, when I call in or I have something happen, it shows up in the agent's desktop, they know, oh, well, you know, actually they were watching a video on TikTok and then clicked here and then went here and then did this. I think they're only getting more complex, you know, which is interesting. I mean, it used to be really simple. Oh, I make a phone call, I buy a product. Then it became, you know, because I got the catalog that was in the mail, you know, there was only a catalog. Yeah, then it became email, then it became web, then, you know, now it's becoming all the different social media points. And I think there's this, this complexity that's growing that we as vendors are trying to figure out how do we make that less complex from a journey perspective, understand it, and then, you know, turning it all the way back into the agent, providing that to the agent so they know what's happening. And then we can start to forecast and predict more pieces too, because, you know, I was talking to a customer earlier, they want to know, if I run a campaign on these social channels, what does that mean from the amount of inbound leads I get to the amount of customers, to the amount of operational support I need to have, and almost forecasting it up front. I mean, it sounds like a Nirvana thing, but they want to be able to forecast it up front. If, if I go spend $10 million on this media campaign, how much revenue and how much cost and what do I need to do to staff to be able to handle that influx you know, yep. piece of it? Yep. All right, so we've gotten pretty far in this conversation with only a couple mentions of AI. So let's, <laughs> let's rectify that. So what do you see as the role of AI in helping to facilitate this kind of integration that you've both been talking about? Maybe Jack, we'll start with you. Yeah, I'll start while you catch Sorry, right thank there. You. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard, you know, because we were joking last week that you can't have a converse, you can't have a conversation with those two letters coming up AI. And and I think, you know, Tony really for me really summarized a lot of the way we look at it today when you start talking about, you know, we're looking at AI today that's more, I'll call it declarative and moving into the generative and moving into the empathetic AI. And I think AI is going to continue to get smarter. I mean, I see it all the time. I, I use it now for my primary search engines. I actually am on Google's beta and where I now it's Google search and it's giving me an LLM rather than give me the generic links, which is really an interesting concept if you think about it. And it's scary in some ways, because it's like, are people going to pay for the LLM to prefer what they think about something? Um, I think when we think about AI here, it's about every interaction is going to start with some sort of AI up front. Yeah. And you know, it's going to be learning from the humans. It's going to be, you know, if you think about co-pilots, co-pilots and virtual agents to me are very symbiotic. So co-pilots sitting there today working with the agent, what's it doing? It's building up the knowledge. It's understanding who are your best performing yeah. agents. It's you know, pulling information. If you think about you know, us being able to pull case information from ServiceNow, now we can say, oh, well, these are the agents that actually best represent how to handle this. Well, that becomes the training data for the virtual agent to figure out how to basically emulate our best agents over here. And so I think there's this really interesting part there. And you heard Mike even mention, and uh, Tony mentioned a little bit about yeah, I think there's going to be a really interesting world evolving with the idea of personal co-pilots. You know, if you think about, you know, your, a, I always say A devices, because I don't want to set them off, but you think about your Alexa devices, or even more importantly for me, like my phone. My phone knows all sorts of stuff about me. You know, why would I need to go look up a brand anymore if I say, oh, you know, if I think about Gmail and things like that, I have, you know, Gmail or, you know, Siri, can you return the last purchase I made from the Gap? It should be able to know. It has all the access to email. It knows my order numbers. It knows all those pieces. It can connect in. You know, I think there's a really interesting world where there's going to be a lot of AI changing how we actually interface with brands from that perspective. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our initial forays into AI, we have, you know, we've we built our own LLM around our our, our data model. We're very opinionated. We, you know, we handle millions, hundreds of millions of cases a year. Uh, billions of chats, like we have a huge amount of training data on those requests on getting work done. And I think ultimately that's the, the the opportunity here is that we've got essentially two different sets of training data and two different sets of capabilities that, that I think really come together to, to, to close the loop. So 
you know, from our perspective, you know, similar to yours, the, the front end of work is often going to be in AI. The, the sort of the middle office quite often, there's a fair amount of automation that we do as well, which is a little bit more traditional sort of um, uh, automation. Um, but then also with a, a layer of uh, you know exception handling on top of that as well. So, you know, from our perspective, um, being able to have a, a, a good, easy glide path for customers because AI is not going to be perfect every single time. You know, back to my earlier point, like not having to repeat yourself because you know, seeing AI not just as a sort of bolt on or a deflection, but actually part of the journey, I think, is the, the big opportunity for us. Where, you know, the, the it can gather data on behalf of somebody, it can set up a conversation with a with a person in the, in the right tone of voice, in the right you know, to your point about set the right tone with the right empathy and then transition that to a human in a seamless way. I think ultimately that's, that makes everyone happier because you know, you're not doing some of the really basic, simple things as an agent where you've just got to collect the same, you know, I need your SSN, I need your phone number. Like, we can, we can do all of that up front and then we can assist agents to find the information that they need to serve the customer, whether it's you know, basic inquiries or whether it's the right business process, whatever it needs to be. So, you know, from our perspective, we've, we've taken a very, um, you know, kind of, adoptable approach more than anything else. I think this is the other thing that, that customers are a little bit, you know, taken aback with all their options in Gen AI. It's like, you know, start with things like case summarization. You know, it's it's straightforward. It's our data model that we know in, like incredibly well. It has, you know, really obvious benefits at the point where you're transitioning between human beings where you take a whole ton of data and, you know, make it make it just a brief summary, make it readable. And, you know, you can change that prompt to, 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 to suit yourselves. So, you know, that to me, AI is going to do a whole ton for us, but you know, I think keeping it adoptable is, is the key thing that we need to, to, to keep focused as well. Yeah, there's so much light and heat around AI that we forget <laughs> that fundamentally it's a set of technologies and technologies exist to solve business problems, right? Yeah. And if you can't make them adoptable, then yeah. why would somebody pick it up, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, the one thing I, I like to say with customers as well, like you don't feel like you need to pick a winner. Don't feel like, oh, I need my Gen AI from over here or my, you know, I'm going to get everything Gen AI from this company. You know, there are, uh, Glenn was talking about this the other week, you guys get like 600 years of voice data every week, which yeah. is a phenomenal training data set. You know, we have similarly very large volumes of, of data on email and chat. Patterns of speech are different between those things. Yes. It, it seems obvious, but so many people are just like, what's my LLM? You shouldn't have one LLM. You, you're going to have a bunch of them for different scenarios. And really, that's a good thing. They should be interoperable. And I think that's one of the things, you know, again, why I'm excited about the partnership and working so closely with the product team is that we can build this interoperability without, you know, sort of putting wall gardens between each other. Because, you know, you guys have this incredible, you know, font of knowledge on, on voice and the way that people speak. And then we've got this incredible, um, you know, degree of structured data on, on the work that people have been doing as well. And the combination of the two is fun. Well, I think you, you, you said something I just want to piggyback off of. The LLMs are also going to change. Think about yeah. how my father talks, how I talk, and how my children talk. Very different, you know, vernaculars. And so, you know, and then it goes into regional dialects, it goes into globalization, but, you know, generational word and speech patterns change. Yeah. You know, I don't even understand half time when they're saying things, and I have to ask them what that means when something's sus. So. <laughs> That just means you're not cool anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've known that for a long time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, so that was AI. So let's let's go back a little bit to where we started the conversation with customers are interacting with a brand. They're not thinking about all these different internal teams. And so when you think about how that those in uh, the the front and back office staffs are gonna be integrated under sort of CX and, and making sure that we're solving these problems, what do you see as the challenges there for that kind of integration of the front and the back office staff? Yeah, I mean, I think the organizational challenge is, is not to be uh, understated. I mean, I think a lot of customers are used to, you know, structuring their organizations really around the, the technology tools, which is, you know, not ideal, but I think a lot of people have just had to survive. You know, they've got like simple contact handling in tier one. They've got you know case handling and some degree of business process in tier two, and then they've got more complex back office processes in sort of tier three. And I think you know the, the challenge that we're going to have is helping people understand how they get away from that model into something that is it is ultimately more flexible. I think you know it goes in two directions. In some respects, uh, being able to allow customers to self serve, being able to allow customers to see where they are in that 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 long running process is is, is you know job number one. 
but equally being able to take some of those what historically have been middle and back office jobs because they are complex and simplify them enough for somebody who's going to do them at a high volume and you know higher frequency when there does need to be human interaction i think that's the other piece as well and i think you know we're we're in a really lucky place and the customers really trust us with that degree of complexity and then helping to you know help them migrate Yes, your tier one folks don't just need to be the people who direct calls to, to different queues once the customer gets angry and smashes zero during the IVR. You know, they, they can do more work for you. If you get that routing right, if you give them the right tools, you give them a process that they can work through that's, that's, man, that's manageable for them as well. So, you know, it, it's going to take time. People are going to have to get used to new organizational design. But, you know, I think you know, to Jack's point, if, if you see the, the investment in people, you see the investment in technology, people are, are you know, hungry to, to adopt that and they're keen to sort of figure out how they make lives better for their, for their staff as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, you know, candidly, it's going to take some fundamental changes in organizational thinking and the silos that I think have been created and how yeah. people measure today, you know, because, you know, I go back to that earlier, you know, the contact center might be measured on how fast they answered the call and, res and handled that call for RMA, but then, the customer's looking at it across, so maybe the shipping group has a different one, and the yeah. you know the response. And so, I think it's going to be it's going to take some top-down leadership also. I think to break down the silos of the organization to say, look, our goal is to be one. And the interesting part is, I'm seeing this happen with multiple of our customers, where we have multiple large enterprises that had multiple brands that now they're saying, no, we are a brand. We might have multiple sub you know, units underneath there, but we need to act as one brand. We need to operate as one brand. We need to think about it as one brand. And I think you know, that's going to be a very critical thing to break those pieces down and be able to unify because it really requires you looking beyond kind of my SLAs yeah. for my unit only to look at the organization. You know, we even talked about it but in our product teams about it's not about my product taxonomy, it's about the Genesis Cloud product as a whole. And while I might have certain things I want to hit on my side. I have to look at what's the better for the business, and I think it's going to take a lot of changing and a lot of looking at that. There's actually uh, Bob Iger's uh, book on Disney is really great, and he has a whole thing where he's like, oh, we had to change organizational structures and compensation and motivation to change customer experiences to make sure that we could think about that holistically. And I think that is something a lot of leaders I've talked to are starting to think about is how do I change those structures and incentives to motivate and you know, incentivize everyone to work together and to think about holistically the customer experience, not my little sliver of it and how I'm influencing that. So, what is coming next that makes it so important to do this today, to, to combine your front and back office today? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I think the answer for every customer is, is going to be a little bit different. You know, I think, you know, customer expectations are, are continuing to rise. You know, we've all talked a long time about, like, loyalty is a, is a key driver of, of any, any company's success. I think people are just continuing to become less and less tolerant of, you know, frankly, the things that they just come to expect from large organizations about, you know, there's going to be delays, there's going to be transfers, these kind of things. I think, you know, they, the... The, the sort of classic of being Ubered is is still a fear for a lot of a lot of larger organizations, and ultimately they do need to transfer their customer service operation, or tra transform their customer service operations to do that. And ultimately, you know, to Jack's point, it's about fulfillment, it's about getting the job done, getting the, the work delivered. And I think, you know, as as the, the the continual sort of digital footprint of a customer gets more and more complex, you know. That's not going away. That's only getting worse. And I think, you know, for, for customers to, to you know continue to come in with these more and more complex needs across more and more channels, it, it, to some extent, without being need about it, it's a matter of survival for a lot of large brands. So you know, I think bringing the front and back office together is is one way to, in the beginning, just to understand and get visibility across engagement and across work, and to understand how do I fulfill my customer needs by understanding what those needs do throughout my organization, throughout those silos, I think breaking those down is, is the first place to start. I think a lot of customers just aren't really sure where to start. So, you know, from my perspective, that's where to start. Baseline the whole thing, understand how that journey works across the, across the board. Yeah, and I think, you know, something you said there, you know, is how I really think about it and frame it is, customer experience is going to change from the measurements and metrics we know yeah. today to the concept of outcomes. You mentioned, you know, customer needs. To me, that's going to be how brands are going to be measured on their, their CX in the future, is it's around outcomes. And so, 
things are gonna be changing very quickly here. I mean, you heard Tony talk about, you know, 40 years, 10 years, yeah. five years, one year. I think it's gonna change really, really, really quickly. And so I think there's an imperative to start to crack that egg now, I'll call it for lack of a better word, because you gotta start thinking about, okay, you know what? In, you know, five years when we make it up, average handle time won't matter anymore. Yep. It's gonna be average outcome time, you know, average you know, achievement for those pieces. Time. I think that that is a, you know, the way when I think about it from a five year perspective, that's where I'm thinking is, okay, what's gonna look like in five years? What have I gotta do now? Well, I've really gotta start thinking about my organization as a whole, as my CX as a whole. I've really gotta have front and back office really unified. I've gotta think about how AI is going to change the experience up front, and now my organization is gonna be faced with harder, more complex, multi-touch things that require engagement, or maybe more sensitive things. You know, I think, you know, AI is not gonna handle if I have a medical emergency. You know, you don't want a bot going, please explain where you're bleeding, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's not the kind of experience. You want someone on there that's empathetic, all those kind of pieces. Yeah, and so I think that, you know, the outcome piece is really gonna drive the measurement, which is gonna drive kind of the need to change how you integrate, what you yep. bring together, and how your ecosystem talks together in the organization. I think that's one of the biggest fundamental things I'm seeing more and more is, we've talked about ecosystem, single pane of glass, and I think the interconnected enterprise ecosystem is gonna become absolutely critical for where the future is going. Well, that's all the time we have today. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank Ian and Jack for joining us here thank in you. CX Green Room, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.